The way we consume and share news today is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it is quite important that we look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minutes, we are now joined by Erica. Uh, good morning, Erica. Good morning. Yes, let's get straight to the first one. Our item is John Ju's Unmad Ramen Cafes Create Connections for the Isolated. Give us more. That's right. There's a unique welfare initiative that's been uh, launched by Tunju in Cholabukdo province. Uh, and uh, it's using ramyeon, instant noodles, as a tool hmm. to help uh, isolated individuals who are living alone. So the project is called uh, Hamke Ramyeon or Ramyeon for wow. Togetherness. And it offers free ramyeon at uh, six different unmanned cafes that have been set up. Uh, in local community welfare centers. Now, the goal of the initiative is to reach the people who are socially isolated, including the elderly or those living in single-person households, uh, without stigmatizing them. And, uh, you know, basically this initiative offers them a welcoming space and mm -hmm. the city hopes to encourage more people to step out of their homes and to seek the support they need. Mm -hmm. Such a heartwarming story to hear. So what inspired the creation of the Ramen for Togetherness, Hamke Ramen initiative? Where did the inspiration for the initiative come from? So one of the driving inspirations behind uh, the Ramyeon for Togetherness uh, cafes was uh, the story of a young man in his 20s from Iksan in Cholabukdo province. So last year, the Welfare Center learned about this young man through a post that he personally uploaded on a secondhand trading platform. And uh, he just posed a simple question. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have expired frozen food they can give away for oh, free? Oh, expired frozen food. So what happened to him? What's the story behind this young man that inspired this uh, initiative? So seven years ago, uh, he lost his parents. And uh, since then, he's been struggling to, uh, you know, find jobs. And uh, every time he got a temporary job, uh, you know, it wasn't really easy for him. And in late 2022, he quit his job uh, because of workplace bullying. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, from then on, he retreated into isolation in his a tiny rented room. Mm. Now, at the time, he had fallen behind on three months worth of rent. Uh, his water heater was broken oh. and he was basically surviving on cold tap water in the middle of winter. Uh, so according to the director of the Welfare Center, the young man's story illustrates the broader issue of uh, isolated households mm. here in Korea. And, uh, you know, the center says if they can reach out to people within two years of their isolation, mm -hmm. they can get help re-entering society. Uh -huh. Now, the simple invitation of why not come by for some ramyeon is, you know, it's just a starting point. Right. It's, a, it's a way... It's a way to help someone take the first step mm -hmm. toward overcoming isolation. And uh, to spread the word, the Welfare Center distributed flyers around the neighborhood and uh, asked small businesses uh, like convenience stores, uh, delis and laundromats to inform people that uh, they can get free ramyeon at the Welfare Centers. Now, the idea for the cafes came from this pilot program, which, by the way, has attracted uh, 1,700 visitors in just one year. Wow. Uh, it's helped identify 42 households in crisis. And Jeonju City uh, has since expanded the, the program all around the city. Wow. First, it was a pilot program and then expanded. So, so let's talk about the cafe itself, the Ramen for Togetherness uh, Cafe. Who can use this space and is it open to everybody? Yeah, so the cafes provide an informal, it's kind of a non-threatening way for people to connect with one another. And they're designed to look really cheerful and bright. And uh, anyone can basically walk in and cook themselves a bowl of ramyeon and uh, enjoy their meal in this comfortable setting. Now, at a cafe in the Peace Welfare Center, uh, visitors can find uh, shelves stocked with more than 10 types of instant noodles, mm -hmm. along with cooking stations. And uh, there are no cashiers. I mean, these ramen mm -hmm. are free and volunteers are there to help with cooking, cleaning, and of course, most importantly, to 
engage with the visitors mm-hmm. in a non um, non obtrusive way. Mm-hmm, that will be the point. Well, I guess one challenge is getting socially isolated people to take that first step inside and leave their homes. That's right. Mm-hmm. So even when they do visit the cafes, uh, these people, you know, when they come for the first time, they they're often quiet. They're withdrawn. Uh, they simply face the wall, eat, and then leave mm-hmm. without saying a word. Now to address this problem. Welfare workers and volunteers, they gently engage with visitors uh, and uh, they they want to gradually build trust with these people. Mm. And they also want to identify the people in need who are in further, who are in need of further assistance. Now, the keyword here is gradually building trust. They don't want to just walk up to people and say, hey, do you need some help? I'm here to help you. (laughs) Mm. No, that would just drive Mm. them away even further. That's right. So are the cafes attracting a lot of people or more specifically, are they attracting the people they were designed to attract in the first place? Yes. So in the first year of the project, the cafes welcomed more than 5,800 visitors. They've identified 15 additional households in crisis. Uh Then the question is, how sustainable is the program? Now, the program is sustained by donations Uh from individuals, businesses, local organizations, including food companies like Nongshim Mm -hmm. that manufacture ramyeon. And so far, they've raised close to 40 million won in donations, um, which is close to 30,000 U.S. dollars. Now, the success of the project has sparked interest from other cities around the country, including Paju in Gyeonggi-do province and Kaeyong in Chungcheongnam-do province, as well as Donggu district in Busan. And they're all exploring similar initiatives. Mm. Uh, Cheonju Mayor Ubangi emphasized that the project is a new kind of approach to tackling social isolation and uh, basically creating a space where everyone is welcome to enjoy a simple meal and, you know, share kindness with one another. Mm -hmm, I guess so. Well, switching gears to different news, TV shows and online platforms face scrutiny for glamorizing alcohol contents here. Yes, that's right. So um, there's a growing popularity of reality shows featuring drinking, And it turns out that nine out of the top 10 TV variety programs uh, frequently show people consuming alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to the latest data provided by the National Assembly's Health and Welfare Committee, 88% of the top rated uh, drama series, 556 of them in total uh, from the past five years, uh, starting from 2019, have featured drinking scenes and of the 11,500 episodes reviewed uh, 6,550 episodes uh, or 57 percent contained 12,000 instances of alcohol consumption so the Korea Health Promotion Institute also monitored uh, online streaming platforms and they've discovered similar trends Uh, over the past three years 82 out of 100 shows on platforms like Netflix, TV, and uh, Wave included drinking scenes with a total of 328 instances. And uh, this is averaging roughly 3.4 drinking scenes per episode. Now, notably, back in 2021, uh, an episode of a dating show on one platform featured alcohol consumption 58 times with 35% of the episode dedicated to drinking scenes. Wow, that's a lot. Well, uh, YouTube is certainly no exception. There are so many YouTube channels that promote drinking culture. That's right. So last year, a search using terms like drinking broadcast or alcohol stream revealed that all of the top 100 videos depicted what the Institute called problematic drinking scenes. And these included overly positive portrayals of alcohol, uh, reckless behaviors while drinking alcohol, or content that might encourage underage drinking. And many of these videos didn't have age restrictions Mm. in place. Wow. Uh, However, under Korean broadcasting regulations, the media is expected to avoid making drinking look attractive or promoting it. Yeah, the media is expected to avoid glamorizing or promoting drinking alcohol. Now, Article 28 of the Broadcasting Review Regulations, it requires careful consideration uh, when they depict alcohol consumption. Article 45 strictly prohibits scenes of children or teens drinking or any kind of content that normalizes 
unhealthy drinking habits. Mm -hmm. But we do know that regulating all drinking scenes through content review alone is quite challenging. That's right. In the past five years, 86 scenes across uh, TV drama series and uh, variety shows were flagged as problematic, but 76, so that's 76 of 86 scenes were dismissed without Mm. action. Wow. Uh, So turning to our last item, news experts say we should be concerned about ultra processed vegan foods. What's that about? So there are growing concerns that uh, vegan foods that have been specifically created for vegetarians and vegans, of course, might actually increase the risk of death compared to regular diets. Now, the BBC recently reported on the debate around ultra processed foods, especially within vegan diets. Now, ultra processed foods, as you'll probably know, are Mm -hmm. products like cookies or ice cream that go through (laughs) multiple complex processes uh, during their production. Now, while nutritionists still disagree on the exact definition of ultra processed foods, these products are generally loaded with stuff like sugar, sodium, and fat to enhance flavor. And they're often high in calories. We're talking about unhealthy fats here. Oh, it's vegan food, but it's high in calories. So lately, plant-based products like soy protein sausages and patties known as, quote-unquote, meat substitutes have been gaining popularity. These foods undergo extensive processing to replicate the texture and taste of real meat. Now, the BBC highlighted the concerns that fake meat created for vegetarians could actually be harmful ultra-processed foods. The report also pointed to research that suggests that those who frequently eat plant-based ultra-processed foods are 12% more likely to die than those who stick to their regular diet. But uh, there is still this ongoing debate among experts even about the risks posed by vegan products like soy-based sausages and veggie patties because not all ultra-processed foods are bad for your health. Mm -hmm. Some types of food may even offer benefits. Uh, For example, cereals and bread uh, contain fiber, which is essential for the body, but other ultra-processed foods may lack important uh, nutrients, including fiber. Mm -hmm. Well, it's quite also important to note that unprocessed foods aren't always healthy either. Right. So consuming too much unprocessed red meat, for example, so just a slab of meat from your grocery store, it's been linked to heart disease, right? doesn't have to be necessarily processed in order to be bad for your health. Um, It's true that ultra-processed foods are often high in sugar and salt. They pack a lot of calories into very small portions. Uh, You know, they're they're tasty, but uh, they're also addictive. And that nature, addictive nature, could also encourage overeating uh, among consumers, which could lead to concerns about weight gain. Mm. Now, experts stress, as always they do, the importance of moderation. It's not realistic to avoid all Mm. ultra-processed foods, whether they're animal-based or vegan. The key is to balance them with uh, healthy foods like Mm. fresh fruits, vegetables, uh, nuts and beans. And if you're doing that, if you're keeping a balance, then you're on the right track. Yes, I guess it really emphasises the need to focus on a balanced diet with fresh and whole food. So thank you so much, Erica. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.